Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. In what can be best described as a freak accident, professional ice hockey and Nottingham Panthers player Adam Johnson lost his life after suffering a serious cut to his neck during the elite ice hockey league in the United Kingdom this past Saturday. The 29-year-old Johnson suffered the fatal injury during a game between the Nottingham Panthers and the Sheffield Steelers. Johnson died after his throat was slit by an errant skate blade in a collision with Sheffield Steelers defenseman Matt Petgrave. Following the incident, the English Ice Hockey Association, which oversees all levels of ice hockey in England below the elite league, issued a strong recommendation that all players at all levels across English ice hockey use an approved neck guard. The advice is in place until the start of 2024, when it will become a mandatory requirement. Compulsory guards are already in place for the likes of Finland and Sweden, while Germany's top flight is also reportedly considering their introduction for the new season. The tragic incident has ignited debate over whether Matt Petgrave should face criminal charges for his role in the event. So Lance, you've read the story and seen the images. Your take on this very, I think it's so sentimental, emotional. It's a sport topic, it's a, it's a sport. What's your take on the issue? It was horrific. That's what I can say. It was difficult finding the video as well because for obvious reasons, a lot of um, media outlets would not want to show what happened. Um, you, whenever you find it, you will see sensitive content alert um, just preparing you for what you're about to see. So I am a little lost as to why it would require a criminal investigation because there's nothing deliberate from what I saw from Matt Petgrave, ice hockey can be a very aggressive sport. You know, players skate into each other and so on. But he, 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 he was challenging. He lost his balance, fell. His, his, his legs went airborne. And that is how the skate got by Adam Johnson's neck. And um, in a flash, there was a lot of blood all over the place. And um, he was taken to hospital and so on, but they couldn't save him. I, I don't think there is a criminal investigation here. I, I looked at the video, I've read all the stories, and it is hard to label Matt Petgrave culpable for what happened. It was a part of the game. It was hugely a freak situation and just horrific, you know, and I read a story where some of his family had been watching the event streaming live because he's an American, he's from Minnesota, and uh, they saw it all in, unfold on their, on their devices that they were watching the live stream of the game with the Nottingham Panthers. And uh, to lose a loved one like that and to watch it on a stream, a live stream, you're thousands of miles away. A nightmare. And, and you can't, you know. Save him. Because that's the first thing you'd want to do. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a terrible story. I, I saw the story on Monday morning and I... I'd never seen anything like that. That's, yeah. that's, that's where it starts. I'd never seen anything like that. I know hockey can, ice hockey can be a very brutal sport and aggressive sport. There is a joke that people always make that they were, they were watching a fight once and an ice hockey game broke out. <laughs> that's just the way of saying that. Fights are always happening in ice hockey. But this was not a fight, to be clear. Um, it was in the, in, the, in the midst of a challenge for uh, possession and um, there was bouncing and the two, the two men fell and uh, the skate from Petgrave got neck height, well not neck height because they were both um, almost floored at the time on the ice, on the rink. And um, I don't think based on what I saw that there is any case here of, of charges against Petgrave because it was 
purely from what I saw, accidental. I'm mm -hmm. not an ice hockey expert, so I, or I, I, don't, I don't know all the moves in the sport and yeah. what the referees or umpires, umpires look for. But um, from what I saw, it would be hard to um, have Matt Petgrave culpable for, for um, Adam Johnson's death. Yeah, and I'm listening to a lot of tributes and stuff. Many people describing Adam Johnson as, of course, brilliant on the eyes, a beautiful person as well. So when Lance spoke about just watching on your television, even as a fan of Adam, and seeing that unfold before your eyes, I'm pretty sure that those people have had sleepless nights because it's what I would describe as a nightmare, something you never expect. Well, moving along now, Professor Nicola Lacey, specializing in law, gender and social policy at the London School of Economics and Political Science. In commenting on the issue, this is what was said. So Nicola Lacey saying, it seems very unlikely the CPS Crown Prosecution Service would prosecute for manslaughter. You need after gross negligence, a really large departure from normal standards of care, such as to justify criminal liability or an unlawful and dangerous act. The latter only likely if, for example, there had been a pretty flagrant breach of the sports rules. If it was really a freak accident, Neither of those tests would be met and the CPS can only prosecute where there is a realistic chance of conviction. Well, one of Johnson's teammates, Weston Mitchell, has defended Petgrave, commenting that the slicing of the neck was an accident. So, Mitchell said, I need to address something about the accident. We wholeheartedly stand with Matt Petgrave. The hate that Matt is receiving is terrible and completely uncalled for. I was at ice level on the bench closest to the accident. I saw both players moving fast. The unintentional clip of Panther, player's leg by the Sheffield player, caused the somersault. It's clear to me. His actions were unintentional and anyone suggesting otherwise is mistaken. Let's come together, not spread unwarranted hate to someone who needs support. So, Lance, we've heard yeah. from an attorney who feels as if, you know, there's no case over here. We've heard from a teammate, a player who was right there, a witness, if I'm to say so, who also feels as if, you know, Pushing on with the narrative that it's Pet Graves' fault only generates a lot of what we already have enough of, social media bullying, a lot of social media hate. Because sometimes in the time that we live in, you only need one little incident, one post, one comment, one incident to, of course, rile the social media gurus, whatever they want to call themselves, up. And they just start ranting, they start bullying, they start without thinking, you know, getting on the cases of who they feel is right, who they feel is wrong, Lance. So you've heard from two people. One is an expert, one was close to the incident. What say you? Yeah, well, the attorney's position is similar to what, what I had. I, I, it's hard looking at the video to think that there is any case here for Matt Pitgrave to answer. Um, it was in the heat of battle and I said, Ice hockey is is an aggressive sport. There's constant body contact and you know slipping on the ice and so on. And and both players were hurled off their off their skates um, following a collision. And um, one of the comments from Michou, who was actually um, playing in the game, uh, you know, fended off any feeling that it it was something that could have been avoided. It was just straight, straight an accident and things that happen on ice where I know these are skillful players, but as you would know, when you, when you, when you're, when you're, we are on ice, if you've ever skated before, you obviously are not going to have control over your body movements as you would on, on a normal surface. Having said that, they are skillful and they know how to move, but he was in an uncontrolled position and it was, it, it's hard to blame him for what happened. Yeah, now I read another report because we always try to bring balance on the show. Another report from a former hockey player that said that um, his name in the report was Sean Avery and he was claiming that um, 
it was an unorthodox move based on what he knew, knew about the sport and he felt like it's not something that was common so they had it in the report saying an unorthodox move which you know he felt was used in that manner yeah. and resulted in the death so of course there are going to be different sides people are going to have different arguments for it some are going to come out and genuinely believe that whatever this player did because people interpret things very differently we we already established that and we'll find some grounds to say maybe he flipped this way um, deliberately to, of course, maybe not kill the, yeah. um, for that result, but, but of just course. just aggression. Yeah. Reckless. So there will always be that yeah. side as well, and we have to be yeah. very aware of that. But Lance, question for you, very, very important question. In your years in journalism, you've received so many awards. You've just been, um, you know, dominating in our profession. Have you ever seen a player prosecuted for violent conduct in their sport? I'm trying to think now. I can't, I can't, I can't think of any. Um, certainly not against a teammate or, mm -hmm. or, or a rival. Um, I know criminal charges can be lodged if your behavior is aggressive enough and, and the offended person like I remember when Eric Cantona left the field and um, flying kick, they delivered a flying kick to a spectator in a match in, in England. He was banned and um, uh, I, I think there may have been a, a police intervention in the incident, but this was a player against a, a fan, mm -hmm. not a player against a player. So I, I, I can hardly remember anything like that happening. It is possible that it could have happened because if it is that the challenge by Petgrave was considered reckless and uh, let's say it is a sport that I understand better football, that it was reckless and deliberately Deliberate. um, intended to, to hurt physically the opponent, then the offended person may want to take it further than just a, a, a football ruling. As I said a few minutes ago, I'm not an ice hockey expert, Correct. so I don't know all the moves. It, it did look aggressive. It did look aggressive and reckless when I when I think of it. But when I think of the sport of ice hockey, it is hard for me to not see a play like that and think that it isn't isn't among the normal happenings in the sport. Because as I said, it's it's a very aggressive sport, and uh, people fight in the sport all the time. And because of the contact in in the sport. It's, 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 it's normal for players to lose their temper and so on. But this was not what was happening. It was just a play and a contact that left both players um, off balance and hurled into a somersault. Mm -hmm. So um, the point that that expert made just now about the, the play being oh, unorthodox, no, I, it's hard for me to speak with authority on that because, yeah. I'm, as I said, I'm not an ice hockey expert. But it, it did look aggressive and it could have been unorthodox, yes. But it is, it, is, it is a kind of collision that I see in ice hockey. So it would be hard for Petgrave to be um, criminally responsible for yeah. Adam Johnson's death. It, so was, it was horrific, though, really. Yeah. And you know our producer is very well read and he's always reading all these random things. So of course, you know, alerting me to the fact that Erling Haaland's dad and Roy Keane. So Roy Keane um, had a move on Erling Haaland's dad, which of course had a lot of, like, it went to prosecution and all that, so. Yeah, well, that, that's, that, that was not the field of play. <laughs> that was not the field of play, so. Um, these things can happen, but if you're talking about two competitors on the field of play competing against so each it's other, still. It, it's yeah, it's a little hard. But but Harlan's dad is uh, is is a huge football person, and Roy Keane is a former player, a current manager, former Man United captain, and he's known to be hot tempered. So things can happen off the field, and the tempers can flare. And if if one offended party wants to take it um, beyond. Um, just a clash in a sporting way and wants to get the police involved, I can easily see that happening, yes. Yeah. Well, of course, as we get ready to wrap this segment, we send our thoughts and prayers there with Adam Johnson and his family. And, of course, those spectators that were present during this because nobody goes to sport. And I say this, as of recent, so many things have been happening. You just innocently buy a ticket and you're going to watch a sport that you know and you love. 
and something like this very tragic occurs, you know, it's something that you never really, you're ever prepared for. So on that note, we wrap this segment. Uh, we have a lot more coming up on the Sportsmax Zone just for you. Stay with us.